Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. We've got another cool switch from TrendNet. Okay, so this is the TEG S5061. It is a six port, 2.5 gigabit uh, unmanaged switch with one 10G SFP plus port right here on the end. So being that this is unmanaged, that means you just plug it in and it just works. There's nothing to configure, there's no username, no login, no passwords, anything like that. You just plug it in and off you go. So this switch is geared for more, uh, I would say more of a, a home use scenario, uh, being that it's unmanaged, but it is a little bit higher end because again, we've got the 2.5 gig ports with the single uh, 10G SFP plus port. And again, we'll talk about that in a little more detail. So here it talks about, again, we've got the 2.5G ports, uh, 10G SFP plus port, metal housing, and it is fanless, which is nice because that'll keep it quiet. Let's see if there's anything else on here. Okay, let me get this to where we don't have the glare. It's probably best like that. There we go. Okay, so this gives you a couple of scenarios on the back of the box that shows you how you might possibly use this switch. Uh, again, we've got 2.5 uh, gigabit ports, fanless, and it talks about the 10G SFP Plus, and we've got everything sort of highlighted there in several different languages, and really the same stuff there. So let's go ahead and get the box open, and now we won't have to deal with all of the glare on the box. I apologize for that, but the glossy nature of these things sometimes really makes it hard to focus on. The details okay so inside the box you've got the safety notes quick installation guide which since this is just a plug and play there's really nothing nothing to really go over this just sort of talks about again a, a possible usage scenario now it does show you the uh, let's see right there you can see that's basically the status of your lights uh, across the front so We'll look at that when it's actually plugged in. It will make a little more sense. And it comes with its own adapter. And this is, let's see, I always like to check the voltage. This is 12 volt, 1 amp. DC, of course, 12 watts. So, kind of see the information right there. That's good to know in case you ever have to replace it. You need to use the exact same unit if you can. And again, this is fanless, so it works uh, passive cooling there. So we've got some slots on both sides there that let the heat out. But it is a metal case. And it looks like we've got some spaces here for, there we go. We've got some little rubber feet there that we can put on the bottom. We'll just go ahead and do that now. And it's got the little circles there, sort of show you where to put it. Now, you would not probably use these little feet if you use the key slots to mount it. But we're not doing that, so we'll just go ahead and put the little feet on there. But the key slots are nice. Okay, so there's where you plug in the power on the back. Across the front, you can see again, we've got uh, five of the 2.5 gig ports. And this is an SFP plus uh, port right there. And let me show you what you do with that. If you are not familiar with what an SFP port uh, so you would actually end up plugging one of these in, and this is from TrendNet also. This is the TEG-10B, actually 10G BSR. And what this is, it's a little fiber optic module. And you have to have fiber, of course, and a device on the other end of the fiber to plug in. And I'll show all that later, but... This is what your SFP module looks like. It has a little protective 
plug right there because you want to keep that in clean. That's where the fiber plugs in, but we'll keep that in there for now. And this plugs into this slot. You have to push it in. And again, we'll do all that, uh, do all that a little bit later. But uh, this would be a fiber connection to the switch. And that's sort of a setup again. Uh, this is for home use primarily. You can use it in a small business. But your higher end uh, networks will use fiber from time to time. Most people, this would be massive overkill. Uh, you can get by with gigabit switches and you probably don't need fiber, but the fiber is kind of cool for a variety of reasons. Fiber is uh, a little more expensive than a typical Ethernet run, or it can be, uh, especially after you purchase your SFP modules. But you can move an enormous amount of data over a longer distance, typically, than you can with, uh, with just Ethernet. And I will get this powered up here in just a moment. But before I fire it up, I think I'm going to take the cover off take these screws out and we'll just see what it looks like inside. Then I'll go over the specifications and then we'll look at the TrendNet website and see what other switches in this family uh, are available. Usually there are different port configurations, but we'll, uh, we'll check that out. So we'll flip this over. Now this only has, looks like two screws that hold the cover on. Now this isn't anything that you would ever really need to do at home, but I just like to see what's on the inside. So there we go. Yeah, that just slides right off. And whoa, and again, like I said, that is a metal cover, metal chassis, metal frame on the unit. Okay, so like I said, it's fanless, so there is no fan. It does have a decent sized heat sink there in the middle and a smaller heat sink there uh, on that chip. And uh, there's really not a whole lot else to see inside there. So we will just go ahead and put the cover back on. And it is nice that this is a fanless design. Some of these units that have fans. Now this one's pretty small. I don't know where they would really put a fan. There's not a lot of room in there for much of a fan, but some of the larger units that have fans can be pretty loud. Now if they're going in a server cabinet or a server room, uh, it doesn't really matter so much, but for home use, sometimes they can be a bit loud, but fanless is nice. Okay, so now let's go ahead and pull the specifications out. Okay, looking at the spec sheet here, and this information is of course available on the product page, but we've got it right here, so let's take a real quick glance at it. You can see all the uh, IEE or IEEE standards on the left there, the top left. Uh, the device interface, we already know we've got five 2.5 gig ports and one 10 gig fiber SFP plus port. Uh, you can see your data transfer rates, uh, performance switching capacity, it shows 45 gigabits per second, which is uh, the volume that can flow through the switch, which is uh, a lot of data. Most people for their home networks, you're not going to get anywhere near that, uh, even a small business still, that, that's a lot of data. So uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, power consumption, nine and a half watts, mean time between failure, uh, 674,000 hours. That's a lot of time. It's a fanless design. Then we've got our uh, operating temperatures, dimensions, weight, warranty, lifetime. Can't beat that. So that's it for the specifications. And now I will use a little program called iPerf3 to check the speed through the ports. And I've been getting pretty consistent numbers here. Go ahead and run the test. We're getting, yeah, 2.33. And you rarely, if ever, see the full 2.5. It's always just a little bit less. But that tells me that we're, we're getting the speeds that I would expect to see through the switch. And on my QNAP switch, my fiber here is plugged into port number nine. So we come over here 
and we look at port number 9 and we are connected at 10G. The other port there is 2.5 on port 10 but we are on 9. So I've got 10G here which is what I'm supposed to have and then the other ports are all 2.5. So we'll take a quick look at some of the other switches here on the TrendNet website. You can see here these are the multi-gig and 10-gig switches. They do make managed and unmanaged. The managed switches, of course, are uh, much more expensive because you have the ability to log in and uh, make a bunch of configuration changes and control the switch behavior. An unmanaged switch, which is what this one is, uh, you just plug it in and go. There's nothing to configure, no usernames, no passwords. Uh, but you can see they've got quite a variety of different port configurations, uh, speeds. Some have fiber, some don't. So it looks like they pretty much have a switch for anything you could possibly need uh, on your network. And the little SFP Plus module, the TEG 10G, BSR, which is this little guy right here. I think I'll do that in a separate review. I was going to roll it into this review, but uh, the more I think about it, I want to do it separately. So look out for that coming soon. And one other thing I want to mention about the throughput here with the switch. It's 45 gigabits per second is what the switch can handle. That's data going uh, in and out. And if we look at your SFP port here for your 10 gig SFP module, uh, ideally, this is the port that you would want to connect back to your router if it can handle uh, a 10 gig fiber port uh, or your switch, your main switch. This is what you would want to connect to that and these would be all of your devices so that all of the data is funneling from these ports and being handled here by your fiber. So since this can handle up to 10 gigabits, and if you divide that among all the ports, you could basically max out all five of these ports and your 10 gig fiber uh, SFP port here would be able to handle that. Now, it's unlikely that you're going to load the switch up with that much data all at once. Uh, I hooked up a couple of my servers and moved data back and forth between them. I didn't come anywhere near uh, coming close to saturating the switch. That would be really hard to do. Okay, let's talk about pricing. Right now the switch for a limited time deal on Amazon is $74.99. And these deals are all over the map. You know, things go on sale and they go off sale. So uh, you just have to keep your eye on it. Um, so $75 for this switch, given its capabilities. Fanless design, runs cool. So it's going to be super quiet. Uh, I think that's a decent price. And another thing to keep in mind, uh, when you use a multi-gig switch on your network, the other devices on your network, uh, in order to take advantage of these higher speeds, they also have to be rated at the same speed. So for example, uh, if this plugs into your router, so everything downstream from here needs to be at least 2.5G uh, in order to take advantage of these ports, these speeds. So if you plug in a gigabit switch down here, then everything that connects to that switch is only going to run at gigabit speeds up to the switch. It'll dumb down to the slowest speed of whatever uh, that device is on your network. So just keep that in mind when you build your network, the backbone, uh, all of your devices need to be uh, at the same speed. Again, you've got a 10 gig port here, so that'll be a little harder and a little more expensive to match uh, these speeds. So overall, I really like the switch. For not a lot of money, you can get a lot of performance. I would give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>